Again, he finishes up the Warlock, helps the Lycan take that kill. And now he sees a duel come out, and he wants to walk in there and cast a- Echo Slam! Today, we got a pretty sick replay of FY God's Earthshaker. You can't really tell from his name, I guess, but it is him. If you don't know who he is, he's this position for Chinese God, probably the most popular position for Chinese player there is and he's made it to multiple top three finishes at TI he hasn't really won one yet but this man is an absolute beast and everybody loves him pretty much in China and even in the West he's very well known so this game he's gonna be playing Earthshaker one of the reasons why I want to watch this game is because I myself play a lot of Earthshaker and I think it'll be very interesting to see how position for Earthshaker can enable his cores and also move around the map and I think this is a perfect game to be able to see that and also how he will utilize his ultimates throughout the game to make the most out of it. So this game, his offlaner is a Timbersaw. And to start a game, we see here he's already going to go block the camp. He's actually buying clarities first over tangles. I think that's the right way to go about things too. You don't need like these tangles super early. So first he makes a block. And then he's going to clarity up. He's going to make another fissure block. I do this too when I play Shaker. I think it's great. To do this it makes the wave come right in front of the tower for your offlaner and he's going to be in a much safer position to be able to contest last hits as the earthshaker is not a really good hero at going into the creep wave and helping your offlaner get last hits so now instead of going for the next pull he's actually trying to zone out this lc as he notices that the lc is bottom and not the enemy carry they actually dodge the timber saw lane so this in this game, carry hero is in the top lane and he's just using a fissure here to block out the hero, making the enemy or like run around the fissure and he's actually gonna be missing a lot of uh, last hits here if the creeps do get low. And instead what it did here was that fissure made the LC move all the way around, the creep wave did not go under a tower and now the LC is pressured by two creep waves and a timber saw plus the earthshaker. And again another fissure here making it so that the LC can't run down the tree path here really applying a lot of pressure in this lane and just like that it goes over and kills a courier too so one of the things with earthshaker is that most of the time when the lane is up here you can just go if you're playing against two heroes just block the camp here with your body and you can just go and kill couriers by planting a ward behind the tower here because the earthshaker normally starts with boots so hunting couriers can give you a lot of farm and because that wave was pushed out here fy went to this big camp and pulled it so that the wave will be pulled back again for his offlaner. And now he realizes that he doesn't really need to help bottom anymore that much. So he's decided to leave this lane and maybe make a play into the mid lane if possible. And he actually plants a ward on this hill here. So this hill ward is going to help his mid laner see the rune. And then he also plants a sentry here. So that way in case they do see him, he can actually kill that ward off. And he does. And now the enemy can't see the rotation from the Earthshaker anymore. And the enemy did a really good job of planting a ward here because that's the only path the Earthshaker can come from. And this is, by the way, maybe, LGD maybe playing this gyrocopter. So he goes mid, he actually blocks off the path here. And this pretty much forces the Earthshaker to TP mid because the mid laner will get pressured way too hard. If the other support didn't rotate to the mid lane, and now the Earthshaker is like in a place on the map where he'd rather not be. And again, he makes another block off. So as of right now, every single picture he's used has been to block someone off from a path where they can go back uh, defensively. And all of a sudden, the gyrocopter feels super bad. He has no resources, he's ran down. He's got a flask though, that's gonna help him quite a bit. But he can't really like TP back to the mid lane like this. And the extra creep wave is mid actually pushed in. And now the gyrocopter essentially lost an entire creep wave. Oh my goodness, nice play from that guy there. Alright, so back to FY here. He's, he notices a courier on the ward again, snipes that off. And that's going to give 50 gold to every single hero on his team. So for like one hit with your enchant totem on couriers is like pretty much netting you one creep. And your entire team also one creep each. So it's really good to like snipe couriers early game with your shaker. Keep eye on the minimap for those things. And he's just kind of camping the mid lane because he notices that Jarcopter is very low in terms of his resources. And the Void Spirit did return to the mid lane after dying. So he's got full everything. And the Void is just going to ball him up. He's protecting the bottom rune. And now this Earth Spirit is feeling a lot of pressure this game to like try and stop 
FY from applying too much pressure to his gyrocopter. And now FY is just gonna go take back the outpost because there's nothing to do mid. There's two heroes there, right? So he's just gonna take the outpost for now. And he's gonna walk back mid again. Like he doesn't see the reason for him to stay bottom because the timber saw is gonna do great against El Legion Commander no matter what. But he might consider going back bottom later when the timber is level six. And now again finds another angle to fissure off the mid laner from going up the hill. And this is applying so much pressure onto maybe here. And just like that, they're just gonna chase him down. This gyro does not have boots. Normally, mid laners don't buy boots early. They need a lot of stats to try and outlast at the enemy. So as an Earthshaker, you can chase them down, especially if they're running away from you. And um, in terms of skill build, you always go the Fissure into the Enchant Totem level 2. The Aftershock is pretty much useless. He doesn't really do much. And the Enchant Totem allows you to one-shot couriers, even if they're flying. So it's really nice to scale this up and also it does a hell of a lot of damage, 100% of your damage. So it's like hitting someone twice for just a cost of 35 mana. So he's going to secure the bottom bounty rune, give that to the Void Spirit, rotate back bottom. And as you can see, why did he rotate back bottom now of all times? Because he gave Timbersaw all the experience to get level 6 first. And now that the Timber is 6, they actually have kill potential on this Legion Commander. So in the beginning, he gave him a lot of space by annoying the legion and now he's back bottom again when the when the timber has kill potential on the uh, lc so there the block doesn't occur he's still sticking around waiting for his next fissure and you can see here his first items he got was tranquil boots and he's always buying clarities for himself tranquil boots is really nice gives you a lot of movement speed and now he sees a courier again enchant totem boom get that courier so much gold to your team. It's so nice to keep playing like that. Always staying between the areas of the hero and where the couriers can travel to. Because if a courier just suddenly walks past you, you can just snipe it. And uh, here he just goes, stacks a big camp, walk, goes back to mid lane. He sees the LC is actually much harder than he thought to kill. So he's just going to ignore it. And now he TPs to the top outpost. He notices that there's a Wraith King not in proper positioning tries to block him off but it only took one tree to get out so he doesn't really get that block off and now he's starting to scale up aftershock so normally as an earthshaker you're just always going to try and scale up aftershock after you get these two skills because it'll make your spells cost more mana if you level them up and you want the aftershock leveled up so that your echo slam and your enchant totem can stun for much longer and you just have so much stun potential as an earthshaker so now he's made his way to the mid lane because he notices there's not much to do on the map. The Void Spirit wants to find the stacks anyway. Just trying to get some XP here if possible as an Earthshaker. And here he actually sees the Jarkov getting a little bit out of position, stuns him. But the Warlock was there so he has to just back off there. And I was saying earlier, like Trankop is a great item in here. You want movement speed as much as you can get. And this item allows him to have uh, pretty much infinite healing going. And then as long as you have clarities, you have enough mana to always be able to fish around the map. And you can see here, this game, he hasn't gone back to base once, right? He just like brings clarities to himself, gets that tranquil boost, just moves around the map. Radiant top, bottom, mid, bottom. He's been to every attack. lane as of right now. Now he's rotated back bottom. Tries to see if he can help the timber take the tower here. Also plant vision in the enemy jungle. So this way, he's actually looking at the enemy all the time, giving information and going ahead on the map. So his timber understands that nobody's going to come to this lane, he can take this tower. And also giving vision and information so his carry can also rotate down here. Because top lane looks like it was a very hard lane for his carry to deal with because there was like three heroes there for this time. So FY, like, now he got a magic stick too. This can be a really good mana battery, which is very nice. He sees a play happening mid. The way he his position is like, we're ready to fissure them off this hill if they start running back here. But it looks like the Legion knows that he's there, so he's actually running up the river instead. But you can see how he's always very patient with casting his Fissure. Actually, he's gonna go for the level 2 Fissure. I did notice a lot of Earthshakers go for 2 levels in Fissure before they max the Aftershock. They like that little bit of extra Disable that the Fissure can provide. I personally just like to go for the max Aftershock, I feel like it helps you farm a lot more. And now he just TP's top, he notices none of his teammates wants to go there. So this is his time to get some space from the top lane if you would like to. Scouts out the Wraith King, notices he's there, so he's just gonna back off. Take the outpost back. And he's gonna get the Tome. Like, as an Earthshaker, you're gonna wanna get the Tomes, because you want all the XP that you can possibly get. Levels up the Aftershock now. And he's just chilling top. He's waiting to see if, like, any of his cores wants to rotate up here and try to kill the Wraith King with him. Also, because of all these skeletons, if he does get a nice juicy Echo, he can get a nice juicy Echo Slam on the Wraith King with that. 
And then when you're farming with Earthshaker, just try to use your enchant totem. Using your fissure to farm is like really is really difficult on you. Like it's such a long cooldown, costs a lot of mana. But the enchant totem with the aftershock damage, it's a hundred damage already at level two. It's so good at being able to last hit creeps with and just like getting range creeps and whatever whatnot. So he used his time to like farm up a little bit top. He got himself to level seven. Uh, he's actually gonna go for higher levels in Fissure in this game, it seems like. He doesn't feel like he can walk into the team fights. Maybe that's the thing why he's not going for the Aftershock max. This is not your normal kind of Earthshaker build, I would say. But maybe in this game, he feels like he can't into the team fight to utilize his Aftershock really well because he's fighting against Warlock and Earth Spirit. And they're really good team fighters. So if, he, if they ever see the Earthshaker, Earthshaker walking in, he might just get Golem by the Warlock and then just die from a fallout from the Earth Spirit. They're just covering mid lane, making sure that he's ready to stun up the enemy if they walk up too far, and then just using that disable to help your cores get kills. So that Legion Commander doesn't die there if he doesn't stun him, right? So he just always wants to be in a position and be paired up with heroes who have the kill potential with them. Here, he TP's bottom, stuns up the Gyrocopter, free kill again. And then now he notices that there's nothing to do bottom anymore, walks back to the mid lane with a Timbers. Timbers, the guy who, plus the Earthshaker Fissure, can get a lot of kills with. So he's just gonna be near him. And here the Legion Commander a little bit out of position trying to get last hits. Gets a nice fissure block. Uh, decides to cancel it. The pathing wasn't proper for him. And now here he just stuns up the Gyrocopter. Sets up another kill onto the Gyro. Gyro cannot walk back because he got fissure blocked here. <laughs> and now the Lycan also rotating mid. And easily they just get two more kills just like that. So the fissure block there on the Jarcopter setting up some really nice kills. And now he TPs back to the dead lane because no none of his teammates want to be there because they don't want to trap themselves. So he's just going to go there and push the creeps off the tower and use his time to farm up a bit. If the enemy tries to come here and kill him, then they're just trying to kill a position for Earthshaker, right? It's not like that big of a deal and they have to go really out of position to be able to do that. And he's actually quite tanky. Look at his HP, 1200. So there's also a chance that if they do go on him top, that his team can react and help him and counter the gank. So here he puts a ward here also. Wards are free to buy. So if you're a nurse shaker, don't mind like getting some wards and planting them, helping your position 5 out to get vision on the map. Because you are roaming around a lot as a nurse shaker. And here at 50 minutes, he tried to go for the bounty, finds a Wraith King, just uses enchant totem, stuns up the Wraith King, fissures him off, and just walks away. It's so hard for people to kill Earth shaker. Because he has so many disables available. If he really was desperate, he might even use Echo Slam. And then he makes a cheeky move around. Notices that people are bottom and Wraith King went on him on the bounty rune. So steals the other bounty here. And now he rotates his way to the mid lane. He's almost got his Blink Dagger, right? The way that you farm Blink on this hero is like just get some random creeps in the safe lane. Help people get kills, get assists. And then just saving up your gold. Saving up your gold normally would get you to that Blink Dagger naturally so you go tranquil boots you get magic stick you just buy a bunch of clarities if you need mana and you don't really want to buy any other item a mana boots generally not a very good item on this hero uh, he'd rather have the tranquil boots for the extra movement speed so he can be moving around the map way more yeah he fishes up the warlock helps the lycan take that kill and now he sees a duo come out and he wants to walk in there and cast an echo slam because he sees a lot of heroes here gets that echo hits so many heroes Stuns up the Wraith King too, and then after he casts all his spells, he walks out because he doesn't want to stick inside of the team fight long. He wants to be able to cast multiple spells if possible, and that Echo Slam did a lot of work, so much damage. And you can see here how FY plays his Earthshaker. The moment he casts his spells, he always goes out of the fight, and once his spells are back up again, he'll try to go back into the fight. And again, top wave sees the wave pushing in, goes up there, clears up the creep wave, and clarities. He's spamming clarities, right? He's he has not gone back to base one time in the 17 minutes that he's been alive already, because he's always bringing himself a lot of clarities. And now he notices a clash happening mid. He already pushed out the top wave. He TP's to the mid lane. Gets a fissure. Tries to help the timber get out. He stuns up the legion commander as many heroes as he can with the fissure there. And that's what he wants to do, right? He doesn't blink in or like walk into the fight to enchant totem the enemy there because he knows that's not a position that he wants to put himself in. It's much better if he stays alive and casts multiple fissures in team fights. The only time he's gonna blink in and cast an enchant totem is if he knows that the enemy is just not gonna turn around and kill him. But here again, ward warding up, you know that the crystal maiden is gonna have a hard time getting to this place. 
She's super slow. So he's the one who goes there and gets that vision out. And now that he's got a dagger, normally with Earthshaker, you can just start camping your cores because you want to see how you can get kills with your cores. Like Blink is pretty much your number one core item on this hero. So right here you can see he's covering the Lycan. He's making sure nobody can come here. And if somebody does come, he's ready to fissure somebody and Lycan with his shapeshift and Necrobook can just kill them, right? He can fissure into Enchant Totem, into Echo Slam, no problem. There's many ways to combo with an Earthshaker once he got Dagger. You can even start with a Blink Enchant Totem into an Echo Slam, then a fissure. And then you can Enchant Totem again if you do that. Other ways is just blinking in, Echo Slamming them first if they're a hero who has some kind of mobility. And they're going to Blink out if they see you casting Fissure or an, an Enchant Totem. So Echo Slam, the way you initiate with this spell on heroes is that if they have very fast mobility or they're about to get out of a fight, there's like an insta, insta disable. There's like no cast animation whatsoever. It just stuns them up right away. And you can see here, once he got his blink, he didn't really farm anywhere. He just kind of like rotated from bottom to mid to top, hunted his earth spirit, and now they got an earth spirit kill, right? After dagger, you can go multiple builds. You can go for Yules. I like Yules a lot. It gives you mana regen, it gives you movement speed, it gives you another disable if you need it. This game, he's actually going for a BKB because he's fighting against Warlock and Earth Spirit and there's a lot of disables. So here, bottom fight, he sees two heroes stacked up, he blinks in, Echo slams him with the creep wave, it does so much damage. Then goes for the Enchant Totem, and he would like to Fissure, but the Earth Spirit silenced him. But they got the kill on the Warlock and the Wraith King. So you want to analyze the fights very carefully to see like when the heroes are moving in onto your allies. And if they're clumped up, you want to go for that big Echo so you can hit multiple people with the Disable. Because it's an instant stun, right? So they stay in that place when you, where you echo them with like three heroes, let's say. And then you can follow that up with an enchant totem. And now you get like a three second stun on three heroes. And then after that, you can get the fissure off and stun three heroes again. And this stun is a 1.75 second stun. So Earthshaker can stun people for like almost six seconds. If you get them stun locked, then nobody interrupts your disables. So it's very nice. Yeah, like I was saying, like the BKB this game is really good against all these disables and the Warlock Earth Spear. Because if he does go in, he doesn't want to get stunned up, he doesn't want to get silenced in any way. So going for a BKB this game is quite nice against all the disables that Radiant have. But if you don't want to go BKB, just you can go for Yules. I think that's a great item. Force Step is okay, but it's not that good. Normally Force Step you're getting it against like other heroes maybe a clockwork for example but yeah so here he tries to fissure off the enemy so they can't go up the hill and his teammates can just go in and kill off his warlock super easily because he blocked off the path from the high ground so fy doing a really good job here understanding where the enemy wants to move next and he's anticipating that and just disabling or like landing fissures so they can't go out so he blocks them here he doesn't stun them but make sure that their path to back to safety is not available to them and here he notices the tower top dying, he TPs there, he pushes that creep wave out, and then he'll just walk back to his team, right? He just wants to be able to keep playing with his team and fighting with his team. So his timber is the one rotating top, so he actually fishes off the Wraith King. He doesn't want to blink onto this Wraith King because he doesn't know who else is behind him. So he's slowly but surely waiting for that angle to be able to jump in. Now he realizes the Wraith King already stunned the timber, so he blinks in, stuns out the Wraith King, walks back. Waiting for his next set of skills. He knows if he stays there, he, he might just get jumped by a Nurse Spear or a Legion Commander. He doesn't want that happening. So he's always in, going in and out of the fights. And now the Wraith King died, revives. He has another Fissure up, ready, waiting for that angle to be able to Fissure multiple heroes. And he goes for the Echo Slam instead first on two guys. Actually, three heroes. And just like that, one Echo Slam, boom, three heroes stunned. And the follow-up damage comes from his team. So I'm going to go back here and show you guys exactly what he was doing, right? So he sees the vision of the fight. He sees the Wraith King reviving. He sees the Earth Spirit down here, right? So he sees the Earth Spirit. He wants the Earth Spirit to roll in first. So he can get that juicy stun, right? He notices the Earth Spirit. And that's why he's not fissuring anyone. He's, he's making the enemy forget about him first. And now the Earth Spirit is going to roll in here. The Echo Slam goes in. And then the Ench Enchant Totem comes up. And he stuns three heroes, just like that. He's waiting for the fight to develop so that he gets that perfect disable on multiple heroes. And the enemy completely forgot about him. They couldn't wait any longer because the Wraith King was dying. Because they were not engaging into the fight as Radiant. And all of a sudden, they just get this. he gets his massive team fight disabled. And that's what Earth Spirit is. Earth Spirit is all about stunning for your allies so they can kill them. And he has so many different disables available. But it's at the same time very difficult to kill as well. And just like that, 
after that fight's lost, they just take two Raxes. And again with his Earth Spirit, just chilling, stunning up the enemy, and getting out of the fights, right? He's not like sticking around in bad situations. He knows that the longer he stays alive, it's the better. Because he gets to cast more fissures, and that's what you need to do as an Earth Shaker. Echo Slam on cooldown, he doesn't want to take any engagements right now. He notices that the enemy is trying to do Roshan, goes and fishes them, stuns like pretty much five heroes. Doesn't have that echo up yet, and he's getting earned up. So the enemy is cancelling his blink, he can't really go in there. He does have a BKB though. He's waiting for that HP to be lower on the Roshan before he jumps in as well, while waiting for the echo sign. He knows that he doesn't need to go in quite yet. And here, the Void Spirit going on two heroes, blinks in, enchant totems. No stuns coming out onto him. He gets silenced up, so he casts his BKB now. And this is why, exactly why he has BKB. So he can not let the enemy disable him for a long time or silence him up. Echo slams two heroes again in the fight. Blowing down the Wraith King. Timbersaw here to clean up. Gets that kill. And easy, just like that. And now he'll help the Timber get the Roshan. And this game is like a perfect example of how to position as an Earthshaker and how to move around the map as an Earthshaker to enable your teammates because that's what Earthshaker is, he's an enabler. He helps your teammate out a lot and allows, the, allows your lineup to have the amount of disables that you need to be able to kill and pin down the enemy heroes. You can see here in this fight he's got... He's positioning himself in a way that he cannot get gone on. And that he's, an, he's the one who's not getting initiated. Got an Echo Sam back off cooldown. He sees all these heroes grouping up and blinks in and goes to the big Echo, right? He sees everybody funneling in onto this Timber and the Voice Spirit. And when they're funneling in, that's indicator for him to go in and get that big Echo Sam off. So you always need to look at those angles when the enemy is funneling in onto one of your core heroes. So you can just go in with your big Echo. And that's it. GG. 18 assists. He had 20, he, he was 4-0 and 21 this game. These are all high MMR China players, right? This is maybe. There's also another LGD player. I believe that was Chalice playing Wraith King. So it's actually two of his teammates. There you have it. This is FY God playing Earthshaker. It's a great replay to understand how positioning and roaming around the map works as an Earthshaker. I think he did a wonderful job at doing both of those things. Oh.